All right, Shalom. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahusha, Bahashem, Rakhagodash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone because those are the men that I learned to shoot from through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahusha. Yahweh is the true name of the God of Israel. Yahusha is who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, but his one and only true name is Yahusha. And, um, you know, pretty much through the spirit, you know, I can't really sleep. It's 2 p.m. You know, everybody is knocked out. You know, it's peace and quiet. So, you know, we're meditating on the scriptures, you know, being in the right spirit. We're meditating on the scriptures and we're hastening, you know, the day of the return of our Savior. You know, Yahweh Shah, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. All right. And um, pretty much just. Um, laying back and off of, you know, the apostles and different elders' videos concerning the um, Israelite foreigners. Yeah, man, you're going to have Israelites that have the appearance of heathen, but their lineage, meaning their genealogy, their descendancy, you know, their pedigree, is that they're descendants of Jacob, all right? The so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native American Indian sea line are descendants of Jacob. And you're going to have Israelites that have the appearance of the heathen nations that's a part of the elect of the nation of Israel due to what? Previous captivities and us sinning against the Lord. So let's get into the scriptures. This is Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 4. It says, And thou, even thyself, all right, because, you know, this is dealing with reincarnation as well. But the topic of the video is dealing with Israelites that's going to have the appearance of the heathen nations, but their lineage goes back to Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right. Jeremiah 17 and 4, And thou even thyself shalt discontinue from thy heritage. What was our heritage that the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, gave us? He gave us the law, statutes, and commandments that was only given to the children of Israel. Pursuant to Psalms, you know, chapter 147, verses 19 and 20. And one of, the, one of our customs as being Israelites was what? Keeping a record of our fathers to prove what tribe we came out of. But due to us, you know, sinning against the Lord, which caused a confusion of faith, you know, a shame unto us for breaking the old covenant, the law, statutes, and commandments. You know, we went into captivity, and our people, they started looking like the heathen due to previous captivities. All right? And you always had the men of Israel that dwelt or dealt, excuse me, with the um, heathen nation woman. At the end of the day, you are what your father is. All right? Your father determines your nationality. It doesn't matter what type of um, facial features, you know, and um, eye colors and stuff like that, that you might inherit from your heathen mom. It's all about the seed of that man because it's the seed of that man that impregnates that woman. And then that seed grows within the womb. All right? So Jeremiah 17 and 4, and thou even thyself shalt discontinue from thy heritage that I gave thee. So the argument that these guys be making is that all 12 tribes of Israel are Negro only, which, you know, that's a lie, all right? And they pretty much come at us, beginning with the apostles of Great Millstone, saying that, oh, you know, you got white boys in your camp, you got heathens in your camp, you know, but and you saying that ridiculous statement, you're calling the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, a liar, all right? And he's not a liar. He's, he's not a, a power that he should repent for what he says because his word doesn't go out void. He said that he has a remnant that's scattered amongst the nations and they're going to be delivered when Yahweh Shah comes back. It says that I gave thee. And, and that's the thing. You know, you guys that believe that all, you know, 12 tribes is um, Negro only, you know, you got to be dark skinned to be an Israelite. Even you guys that's dark skinned, you can't prove what tribe you come out of. Because just like the Israelite foreigners that have the appearance of the heathen, you know, the ones that believe, of course, you know, 
they believe that they're Israelites based off of what? The hearing of this word. All right? And they believe through faith. No different than a dark skin, you know, Israelite. All right? Whether you, you're dark skin, you're light skin, it don't matter. It's all about the faith. And only Israelites is going to believe on its word. All right? The Lord is not going to bring a heathen into the fold. So it says that I gave thee. Because remember, you know, Yahweh. He gave uh, Moses, you know, the commandments, which is ultimately 613 law statutes and commandments. And he also gave us his name, which that name is Yahweh. And what does the scriptures tell you? That the name of the Lord is dreadful among the heathen. All right. So the fact that you have Israelites that have the appearance of the heathen, but they're calling on the name of the Lord. You know, they're pushing the correct gospel, like how we at Great Millstone beginning with with our um, apostles and elders you know teach you know they teaching the correct thing that means that what revelation 3 and 20 that yahweh shall supper with them so who are you to judge another man's servant that's because a lot of you dudes is carnal you know you try to make being in the truth like it's some gang shit you know you try to make it like it's a black power movement and it's none of those things you got to remember you got dudes coming from all walks of life you know, you're going to have Israelites that have, you know, heathen moms. As long as they believe and they're pushing the correct doctrine and they believe according to the scriptures, you know, you can't judge them. Only the Heavenly Father can judge them. All right. It says, and I will cause thee to serve thy enemies. Who is our enemies? The heathen nations. All right. After the flood. You know, the whole earth was repopulated through Sham, Ham, and um, Japhet. All right? And there was 18 nations all together. But there's only one chosen nation, which is the nation of Israel. And then you got the 17 heathen nations. But you have the Israelites that scattered amongst the heathen. Because that was a curse when you read Deuteronomy 28 and 64. You were scattered amongst the heathen due to our rebellion of following the way of the heathen, which resulted in what? Our downfall. All right? You know, you, you dudes are silly with your arguments. It says, in the land which thou knowest not, and ultimately, that's talking about what? Here in America, which America is Babylon the Great, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt because it's keeping all the same wicked customs that the ancient Egyptians as well as those ancient Canaanites that inhabited Sodom and Gomorrah and those five neighboring cities they're keeping the same customs you know they're carrying on the same traditions the same trends which is going to result to what thermonuclear destruction because Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed by fire and brimstone how is America which is Babylon the Great going to be destroyed by fire and brimstone by the way of this, the thermonuclear missiles because thermonuclear missiles as well as World War 1, 2, and 3 is in the Bible whether you want to believe it or not so it says in the land which thou knowest not for ye have kindled a fire in my anger which shall burn forever which is a pacific period of time until Yahweh comes back to deliver the elect of the nation of Israel and once he comes back and do that, Revelation 22 and 3 is going to take place. There won't be no more curse. First, beginning with the elect of the nation of Israel, the believers, all right, the ones that's been predestinated since the world began, the first fruits, meaning the first spirits created, all right? So um, let's keep going. This is Romans chapter 8. Verse 16, because we believe by faith, man. We're faith-based Israelites. We don't really, we don't need carnal things to believe on Yahweh, the God of Israel, as well as his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. Because the God of Israel, Yahweh, through Yahweh Shai, according to Ephesians 2 and 8, have given us the gift of faith, which Lord willing, we hope that we endure unto the end. Because we're not prideful. You know, we see somebody going off according to the scriptures, we re rebuke them openly. All right, that's better than secret love, like how the scriptures say in Proverbs, which is a sign of what love. All right, continuing on. 
Romans 8 and 16, and I'm going to read down. It says, the spirit itself bear witness with our spirit. So this is what we do, beginning with the apostles of Great Millstone on down to young brothers like myself. We'll see an uh, individual, whether it be a man or a woman or a child, and we'll look at the characteristics, right? We'll, we'll test the spirit. We'll try the spirit, you know? And if they are intrigued at what we're teaching, you know, more than likely, they can be an Israelite. Because you can't, you can't copy the characteristics and the spirit of an Israelite. All right? You can't do that. So it's easy to identify, you know, through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Yahweh, who's an Israelite and who's not. But ultimately, even if we're wrong on our judgments, you know, it's ultimately up to the angels to sift the house of Israel. Like how it says in Amos 9 and 9. Because you got to understand also, even during slavery and our different captivities, you know, you had them heathen men, you know, they were raping our women. You know, they was having sex with our women and they was impregnating them. Resulted, resulting in what? You know, um, the sea line of the heathen being mingled amongst our people. So the angel, that's the angel's job, to sift the house of Israel. But when we say that a guy can be an Israelite, even though he might have the appearance of a heathen, we're being spiritual in our judging, which is ultimately what? Faith. It says the spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of Yahweh, And that's what we are, all right? The so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native American Indians are the children of Yahweh. all right? Whether you want to believe it or not, prophecy proves it. And there's other books that back that up. It says, continuing on, and if children, then heirs, heirs of the Most High, and joint heirs with Hamashiach. So that's what we hoping and striving for. You know, we, we hope and pray. You know, we hope to be a part of the elect. You know, you don't want to just be called and then, you know, cast it out. Because then you just wasted your time. You did all that suffering. You know, you stand now in the winter. <laughs> you dealing with the, the ailments, you know, catching hell. You know, Satan coming after you. You know, just to go back into the world. You got to be crazy to do that. You know, so we hope that we're called and chosen. All right? It says, and joint is. And we joint is to what? Yahweh Shah sacrifice. And that's a true friend, man. You know, he died ultimately you know for the whole nation of israel but it begins with the elect he made us joint heirs you know he could have enjoyed his kingdom you know by himself but you know he made us joint heirs and that's a beautiful thing it says with hamashiach it says if so be that we suffer with him that we may also that we may be also glorified together and that's the thing we're going to be glorified together in the kingdom of heaven all right, so let me keep going. This is Galatians chapter 5, verse... Hold on. All right, Salakia, so you know, I live by the Amtrak train station. Anyways, Galatians 5 and um, 25, it says, If we live in the spirit, and that's what we do. All right, to live in the spirit. We offer up, you know, spiritual sacrifices, doing these videos, going out on the highways and byways, making our bodies a living sacrifice. You know, we're, we don't have to do animal sacrifices no more. Why? Because Yahweh Shai is the ultimate atonement for sins. Pursuing the what? Hebrews um, chapter 7 from verses 25 to 27. All right? He's the ultimate atonement. Um, for the nation of Israel, beginning with the elect. So it says, for if we live in the spirit, right, let us also walk in the spirit, which is what? Being a faith-based Israelite, which, you know, the other camps, really, IUIC, you know, they, they tease us for that. But that's how you're supposed to be. Um, continuing on, let us not be desirous of vainglory, because we're not in this truth to be celebrities, you know, 
oh, I'm better than you because I get more views than you. You know, we, you know, we're not them type of dudes. You know, we just want to sincerely glorify Yahweh and Yahweh Shai in the hopes of receiving salvation and to push this gospel to maximum potential as Yahweh Shai have given us. Yahweh through Yahweh Shai have given us. It says, not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another and envying one another. And that's what you dudes do, you know? When you're denying, you know, the Israelite foreigners, you're trying to shut up the, king, the um, kingdom of heaven, you know? Because you're envying an individual based off of how they look. And that's being carnal. That's not being spiritual. That's not something that the elect would do. That's not a characteristic of the elect. All right, the elect, they would be humble and they will go based off of the scriptures. They will make judgments based off of the scriptures, not their own personal vain opinion. Because this is how the Lord, you know, um, judges an individual. This is how he sees an individual. Here's an example. Because this is dealing with what? When the Lord took the spirit, you know, from King Saul for his disobedience, you know, because he gave him an order on what to do. You know, to Amalek at that time, and he didn't, he didn't obey. First Samuel 16 and 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature. So the Lord don't care how tall you are, how much, you know, damn muscles you got. Who cares about that, you know? Only a, a carnal mortal man thinks about that. You know, it's not wrong with being in shape. You know, you want to be in shape to the best of your ability, you know, dealing with these ailments and fighting a good fight of faith. But the Lord doesn't care about your stature. All right. He can use an individual of any size or even dealing with any type of infirmity, you know, to glorify him. Because he said what? He could raise up um, stones, roughly paraphrasing, to glorify him. You can't put a limitation on the Heavenly Father's power. All right. So it says, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. How does a man seeth? For man looketh on the outward appearance. Oh, man, that guy is short. Or, you know, you know, just everything, you know. A man, he'll make, you know, foolish decisions just based off of appearance. Oh, that, that can't be a man of the Lord. Oh, look at how he look. Oh, he ain't going to last long. Oh, he going to fall off. You know, they try to put like a time, a, a, a timeline, you know, when you're going to fall off. You know, that's how man, you know, thinks. It says, but check how the Lord think. It says, but the Lord looketh on the heart. All right. And this word here, yep, is on um, love. Strong's H3824. Levav. Levav. Yep. The inner man, right? Your spirit. That's why the scriptures say what? Let us walk in the spirit, which is what? Faith. The inner man, the mind, your will, your heart, your soul, your understanding. All right? You can't just judge an individual based off of how they look. And that's where a lot of you are going to go wrong at. And, you, and that's going to lead to you being offended. And you're going to be destroyed for that if you don't repent and get yourself right. Because you have to always go by what? John 7 and 38. He that believeth for me is the scripture. I said, you always got to believe according to the scripture and not your own vain, you know, opinion and your foolish emotions. Yep, the inner part, the midst, the heart of a man, the soul. You know, if you see a dude glorifying the Lord, why the, you know, what the hell is the problem? You know, why you got a problem with him? You got to check yourself out. That's why the scriptures say what? Take the beam out thy own eye. You know, examine yourself whether you be in the faith. It says mind, knowledge, thinking, reflection, memory. All right. If you see a dude pushing the correct gospel, like here at we on uh, um, Great Millstone teach, you know, through the spirit of power of Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, what the hell is the issue? That man is an Israelite. Yep, conscience, heart of a moral character. All right, so forth and so on. So that's how the Lord judges on the spirit. You know, what have you done to glorify him? That's what he care about. That's what Yahweh Shai care about. You know, you want to be that good and faithful servant. When Yahweh Shai come back, he said, occupy till I come. And is he going to find faith on the earth when he come back? That's what you should be concerned with as an individual in the truth. 
you in the truth to prove your faith ultimately to Yahweh while Yahweh shy, you know? But there's a certain guideline on how you got to do it. You know, you got to minister unto the saints, which means what? Serve the saints by spreading this gospel, feeding them with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding through the spirit and power of Yahweh while Yahweh shy. You're not serving the saints by teaching that all Israel is going to be dark skinned you know, on this side. That's that's stupid. That's not in the scriptures. Um, First Timothy 1 and 4. It says, Neither give heed to fables, right? Fables. The book of Enoch is a fable. All right? All these false philosophies and religions, they're all fables. All right? Idolatry is a fable. It says, In endless genealogies, DNA kits, Oh, I, you know, I got my, my own 23 and me DNA kit, you know? Oh, I know I come from here. I'm 17% this, I'm 2% that. That's confusion, that's stupid, all right? And that's a scam anyway. DNA kits are a scam. You know, go on YouTube and type up DNA kit hoax. All that is debunkable. All these people that's invested in money and buying DNA kits, you wasted your money and you've been lied to. Because these companies can't prove, you know, your um, location. First of all, Israel is not even recognized as a nation of people, the true Israelites. So why would you go by that? These people have been switching our nationality up, you know, for hundreds of years. Are so you going to go by a DNA kit? Come on, man. Endless genealogies, which minister questions. And that's what happens. It ministers questions. It says, rather than godly edifying, which is in faith, so do. So that's what you want to be concerned with, godly edifying, which is in faith, through the spirit and power of Yahweh, why Yahweh shy. That's what's wrong with you, dudes. You don't got the faith. And that's why you err not knowing the scriptures. This is Jeremiah chapter 32. And I, I speak as a novice. I'm not some dude that know every damn thing, you know? I'm just a person, you know, I go into the basics a lot. You got to have a, a solid foundation. This is Jeremiah chapter 32, verse, I just want to get to the point, verse 37. Behold, because what is this dealing with? Scroll up. This is dealing with, um, because I know Jeremiah, he was cast into prison. Yep, he was in prison. So this is the end of what Jeremiah prays and the Most High is explaining, you know, pretty much in the future, which is this time period right now and in the future, that he's going to have mercy upon Israel and gather us, you know, from the heathen. So this is Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 37. It says, Behold, I will gather them out of all countries. Hold up. The, the sea line of Jacob is scattered amongst all countries, meaning all nations of people. You think they're not going to be talking like the heathen, keeping the customs as the heathen, and looking like the heathen? Generations and generations down the line of the sons, you know, consistently marrying the daughter of the heathen? You don't think that offspring is going to have the appearance of the heathen? The area where they've been scattered at? Come on, man. It says, whether... I have driven them in my anger and in my fury and in great wrath. Why? Because we followed the way of the heathen after being warned by the mouth of the prophets and the different judges that Yahweh, the God of Israel, have risen up, which resulted in what? The Lord not accepting our sacrifices. All right? Which is one of the reasons why you, you need to acknowledge Yahweh Shai on this day of atonement. Because Yahweh Shah became that ultimate sacrifice and now way back to the Father because he's a mediator. All right? You can read about that, you know, Hebrews 9 and um, Hebrews 10. It says, um, Whether I have driven them in my anger and in my fury and in great wrath, and I will bring them again unto this place, which is what? Our land, the promised land Israel that was given to our forefather Abraham. And Pastor Jacob and, you know, the patriarchs. Because that's our land, not Africa. It says, and I will cause them to dwell safely. 
That's what's going to happen in the kingdom of heaven. That's going to first begin with Yahweh Shah. Yahweh Shah is going to bring us back to our land. We don't need to get no plane tickets and go over there, you know, because you're going to go over there and do what? You're going to wear a yarmulke, you know? It don't make sense to do that. This is Revelation chapter 7. Now, this is dealing with what? The sealing of the elect. And, and the elect is being sealed through the spirit and power of Yahweh Wah Yahweh Shai by this gospel and its word. So this is dealing with what? First, the 144,000, which is the governing body, right? And then you get to this, the multitude from the tribulation. So this is where I'm starting from, Revelation 7 and 9. And after this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number. So you got the 144,000, and then you got a great multitude. It says, which no man can number of all nations. So people will read that, and, and Christians will start clapping. You know, they'll start playing um, piano. <laughs> you know, they start praising, you know, their, their um, idols, you know, God and Jesus. But when you go into this word nations, Strong's G 1484, the word there is ethnos. And what is it going to say? Yep, it says a tribe, nation, people, group. So that's Pacific. And then let's go to the last part. It says Paul uses the term for Gentile Christians, which, you know, the the word Christian, it just means of the followers of the anointed, of the Messiah, you know, the Hamashiachim in, in the Hebrew, which are who? Israelites. Heathens didn't follow Yahweh Shai. I mean, you had accounts like in St. John chapter 4, with a woman, you know, she thought she was an Israelite. She said, our fathers worship in this mountain. But her fathers come from when those different Assyrian kings put heathens into our land. All right? So this is talking about Israelites. This whole chapter is talking about Israelites. The sealing of the elect is, is talking about Israelites. Nowhere here is talking about heathen. It says, in kindreds, and, yep, and kindreds and people, Right, you go into this word on um, people. I think this is it. Yep. Let me let the word play. Strong's G twenty nine ninety two, Laas, Laas, Laas is gonna say a people, people group, tribe, nation, all those who are of the same stock and language. Come on, man. Of a great part of population gathered together anywhere. Didn't. Come on, this is crazy. Then it says in uh, Matthew 20, chapter 24, verses 30 through 31, how uh, Yahweh Shai is going to send his angels to gather together his elect from the four winds. The scriptures is clear, man. There's none to debate here. It says, and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne, right? The Israelite foreigners, the ones that's a part of the elect. Because just because you're an Israelite foreigner, that doesn't mean you automatically a part of the elect. It says, and before the lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God. If these were heathens. Heathens got their own custom and heritage, you know, and, um, you know, belief systems and gods that they worship. A heathen ain't going to say salvation unto our God. Only an Israelite is going to say that. It says, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the lamb. So, you know. All of us collectively, we're going to be praising Yahweh Yahweh Shah for delivering us. That's how we're going to give, you know, victory over the beast, you know, and his karagma. That's going to be through Yahweh Shah. Isaiah 1111. 11. This is dealing with what? The elect. The remnant. It says what? The restored remnant. It says, and this shall come to pass in that day, right? I'm talking about right now. That the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, right? His people is who? The Israelites. His people is the people that he made the covenants with, which is only the nation of Israel. The old and new covenant only applies to the nation of Israel. Nowhere in the Bible can any individual prove that the scriptures dealing with salvation is for the heathen. 
the sea line of the heathen. That's not in the Bible. It says, we shall be left from Assyria, right? Remember the nation of Israel, we was conquered by the Assyrians. You know, the northern and southern kingdom. It says, and from Egypt. You know, we all know the story about Egypt, but you got Israelites that was in Egypt. Remember the Lord fled to Egypt, you know? You had um, Ptolemy, he took 100,000 Jews and brought them to Egypt. That's where you get that guy, um, Simon the Cyrene, that helped. You know, Yahweh Shah carried that, cro that um, cross because the cross was heavy, which was representing all the sins and in slash iniquity that the nation of Israel committed in the eyes of our father, Yahweh. Right? It says, and from Petros, which if I'm not mistaken, that's in Egypt as well. Yep, Petros, region of the south, a part of Egypt and the home country of the Pathrusian people probably located in Upper Egypt. Um, yep, and from Cush, right? You got some of them Falashian Jews, you know, that's in the, in the land, and that's scattered in um, East Africa, you know, in Ethiopia, or Tria. You know, a lot of them is Israelites, you know? You have Israelites that's in that land. Remember what the scriptures say, Hosea 1 and 10, Israel is as the sand of the sea. You can't count each grain of sand but it's, it's so much of it though that's referring to what israel you know that the sea line of jacob is all over the earth people that you least expect you know they can be israelites you never know but you can't make yourself an israelite pursuing the romans 9 to 4 romans 9 to 5 it says in elam right so-called east indians you got the cd people you got the so-called um i think they call them the untouchables it says in Shinar, where Shinar is dealing with what? Where ancient Babylon used to be at. You know, the, the first Babylon. But let's, let's go into it, though. Yep. It says the ancient name for the territory later known as Babylonia or Chaldea. And that's where, you know, the, the um, Neo-Assyrian Babylonian Empire was at. You got Israelites that's there. And Hamath, which if I'm not mistaken, I think that's still Egypt. Nope, excuse me, I was wrong. It says, the principal city of Upper Syria, all right, in the valley of Horontes. All right, so you got Israelites, that's in Syria. It says, um, and from the islands of the sea. So you got Israelites that's scattered amongst, you know, Japheth. It says, and he shall set up an enzyme for the nations, which Yahweh, why Yahweh Shah is using us beginning with the apostles of Great Millstone on down to the young brothers like myself and Great Millstone as a whole, he's using us for what? As an enzyme for the nations to help seal the elect through Yahweh Shah's sacrifice. It says, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. That's what he's doing with this word. Final scriptures, Second Ezra 9 and 7, and everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his worth, his works, because um, faith and works go hand in hand. If you believe, you're going to speak, Psalms 116 and 10. If you got faith, you're going to want to do the works. You're going, The Lord is going to put the spirit on you to be fully persuaded, and you're just going to take, you know, whatever comes, and you're still going to glorify the Lord, no matter how much tribulation and um, hell you catch. It says, and by faith whereby ye have believed. So this applies to whether you are a dark-skinned Israelite or you an Israelite that has the appearance of the heathen, but you believe, hey, it's all about faith. Faith in who? Yahweh Shai. All right? Shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders, for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. All right? So those are the ones that's under grace, the first fruits, you know, the elect. So, hey, man, Lord willing, you was edified. You know, so lucky if this video was kind of long, you know, just meditating on the kingdom. Shalom.